In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace and peace of God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everybody. Good morning to those watching us online. We call to mind our sin, our sins as we ask God for pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and to bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, eternal health of believers, hear our prayers for your servants who are sick. Grant them, we implore you, your merciful help, so that with their health restored, they may give you thanks in the midst of your church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. You may be seated. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. You have also forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as his sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seemed a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet later it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness by those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, for what is lame may not be dislocated, but healed. Strive for peace with everyone, and for that holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it, that no one be deprived of the grace of God, that no bitter roots spring up and cause trouble, through which many may become defiled. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. But the kindness of the Lord is from eternity to eternity toward those who fear him, and his justice toward his children's children among those who keep his covenant. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In those days, Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. One afternoon, a high school teacher was pulled over for speeding near the school. And with the lights flashing on his cruiser, the police officer stopped the teacher and asked him for his license and registration. As the embarrassed teacher sat in his car while the officer ran his registration, students recognized him as they drove by. And as you can imagine, they thought this was great. They honked their horns, they whistled, they hooted. Way to go, Mr. Speed Demon! Still others stopped and mockingly admonished him for speeding. The teacher wanted to die. After what seemed like an eternity, the police officer returned and asked if he was a teacher at the high school. The humiliated teacher admitted that he was. And then the police officer smiled. I think you paid your debt to society. And he let the teacher go without a ticket. As this teacher learns, authority is much more than words. It's the lived commitment to one's beliefs. Authentic authority is not invested by virtue of office or title or wealth but by the wisdom that comes from experience and the integrity and humility to live and work for what is right and just. And such is the authority of Jesus in all of the Gospels. His authority is not the ability to manipulate his hearers' suspicions, apathy, or ignorance, but to call forth from them a commitment to mercy, justice, and compassion. Those who speak not to our emotions and wants, but to our consciences, who speak not in clever so slogans or the latest buzzwords, but in the convictions of their experience, who share with us from the wealth of their own hard work and study, possess the authority that is of God, an authority that is worthy of our respect and our attentiveness. Please stand. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Blaise, who was a bishop in Armenia in the 4th century. 
Before being martyred, he is said to have healed a child who was choking. And since the 8th century, St. Blaise has been venerated as the patron of those who suffer from diseases of the throat. We pray in a special way today for protection from afflictions of the throat and from other illnesses. And the blessing of St. Blaise is a sign of our faith in God's protection and love for us and for all the sick. We will now lift up to the Lord our many needs and concerns. And as we conclude the intercessions today, I'll provide you all with the blessing of throats. For all members of the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to guide us in the ways of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For peace in our world and in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who struggle with addiction, may the Lord's kindness and compassion come upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. For our seat and faith community, may the Lord sow seeds that bear much fruit in our lives of discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead, may they know the fullness of life with God in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. For Tom Cosgrove, for whom this Mass is offered, and for what or for whom do we pray for today? Lord, hear our prayer. For all here present today and those watching us online who seek the prayers of St. Blaise today, that they may be protected from afflictions of the throat and other forms of illness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Through the intercession of St. Blaise, bishop and martyr, may God deliver you from every disease of the throat and from every other illness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we had this bread to offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Since the moments of our life unfold, O God, according to your good pleasure, receive the prayers and sacrificial offerings by which we implore your mercy for our sisters and brothers who are ill that having been anxious for them and their danger, we may rejoice at their recovery of health through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Jesus Christ. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you forever. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O Lord, you are indeed holy. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more given you thanks. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, your people spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, the Martyrs, Saint Blaise, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress and anxiety. 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith and courage of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O God, only support of our human weakness, show the power of your protection on your servants who are sick, that sustained by your merciful help, they may be restored to your holy church in good health through Christ our Lord. Uh, just a brief announcement to make. We have a, a very short week with regards to Mass. So tomorrow we will have morning Mass. Tomorrow's Thursday. On Friday I'll be away on my winter break for the week and I'll return for Masses on Valentine's Day weekend or President's Day weekend, no matter how you're going to celebrate it. Um, so next week we will not have morning Mass, nor will we have communion services. Uh, if that changes, if we have communion services next week, I will certainly uh, make the announcement. Uh, so just stay tuned. Have a good week. Have a good day, everybody. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, everybody, online. And have a nice day. And if you would, please be seated. And Mo will dismiss you. Thank you.